Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. Hey, you guys remember this episode right here? The person who wrote that article asked me to let you guys know that he also has a YouTube channel if you're interested in more stories. You can find him at this URL or just by searching Ask Zach. It appears he's a bit of a guitar storyteller as well if you're interested in any of these topics. Now let's get on to today's episode. But this time let's start with the Gibson Mod Collection. This is the one that's on their website. It's different from the Reverb Store, but it's really seeming like all the very interesting guitars are starting to show up here. So this is the page as it looked like when it first refreshed. I might have missed one or two, but there are a couple of really cool ones that we need to talk about this week. So first off, these guys have been sitting in the store for a while, as has the Firebird. I'm not really that excited by this 335 Satin or this 50 Standard, although it does look pretty good with black plastics. But no, the first one that caught my attention was down in this row. This ES-335. I was very tempted to purchase this thing because I love the dark green colors and this one was just so beautiful. You can tell it's definitely a metallic finish on here too. It's going to change from dark to light. You can even see that a little bit. But what ultimately sold me on this one is, hey, Gibson Mod Collection, that is the one that's on their front page. Like, we have saw the Modern of Doom get sold on their reverb shop a while ago. We've also seen this Explorer. I'm not sure if we've seen this one or not, but that is a new one, and that is an iconic guitar. So once I put two and two together, I went to buy it, and somebody else had already got it. I thought that'd be fun to review one of the mascots. And believe it or not, that was offered at a discount, because a normal 335 is 3000 bucks. Our next really cool one was this Les Paul Access done up in a blue sparkle burst top. Looking at our other photos along the side here, it looks like it still had the black back, which seems to be what they do with a lot of their sparkle tops, but man, that's, that's kind of out there. Like, the guy who would actually want to gig this guitar, I think he would appreciate the blacked out hardware. However, the bright sparkle blue, I, I don't know. <laughs> I like it, but at the same time, I could see how somebody might not like it. At the time of recording, it's still available for 5,600 bucks. Our next row offered some very interesting pickup and flavor combinations. So this Firebird sold relatively quickly. The top has a sparkle red finish, whereas the wings are a light blue color. And they listed it as a Pastel America finish. I don't know about you guys, but I think they seriously dropped the ball by not doing that also on the back. Like the neck should have matched at least the body finish because that's kind of the thing about Firebirds. If the one section's painted that color, the rest should too. But that's just how I feel about it. I do appreciate that they took the time to, you know, actually make the little thumbnail of the finish actually be blue and red though. And then there was this thing. It was just too strange. Like, look at that. Would you have ever imagined a metallic blue with a red berry burst mahogany color under that, let alone with cream P90 pickups? But the real kicker on this one is they didn't skimp out. They did it on the back too. It looks like they went as far as bursting the neck, like doing like a half and half job on here, doing a, a semi what burst here. Like, I don't know, maybe it changes colors in person. Normal ones are only 1600 bucks. So at a $400 premium for Wildberry Blast, a very interesting finish choice. It was a no brainer. I had to buy this one. We're gonna see it full review and demo style. Like, I don't expect everybody to love and appreciate this one, but hey, I liked it. I wanted to document it. On top of that, it's been a really long time since I featured one of these modified Gibsons on the show, and that one checked all the weird boxes for me. But this right here is probably the best deal of the entire month. Like, I was here in time to have purchased this. This is a Blueberry Burst 59 Les Paul Standard. These things are 6,500 bucks brand new. So the fact that you're getting like a sweet $2,000 discount, a custom exclusive finish, a viewer of the show actually purchased this one. They offered it to me, but for me to have wanted this, I would have wanted to uh, broke in tradition here and not had the natural back. Had something a little bit more exciting like that crazy special but that was a steal and a half. This 54 reissue was kind of nice looking too. And then take a look at this thing, SG Standard Fat Neck 3. I'm not sure about this guitar's self-esteem, but look at the pickup combinations. I love this set because it makes sense. Your neck pickup has the pull pieces up here. The middle pickup has them in the middle. The bridge has them in the bridge position. It's very satisfying to see that because there's always a big debate. Which way should the middle pickup go, up or down? This one, it makes the choice easy with the P94 pickup in there. 
And hey, just now seeing this, a stinger on the back. Nice. And that's not just a regular red finish either. That's the beautiful sparkling burgundy on a custom shop. So that was the mod collection at launch. Here's what it looks like today. You just kind of have some of the leftovers. But now let's switch over to the reverb demo shop. There were still a few cool guitars. It doesn't seem like it has changed that much. The mod shop just seems to let them produce more and more crazy out there type guitars. Whereas the demo shop still gets nice stuff, but you only get like a handful of really fine examples mixed in with the nice player grade stuff. So the first one that caught my attention is this 60s tribute in the blue fade satin finish. Gibson. Just throw this in production. Do it. It's beautiful. It's a blue burst. You've got the traditional burst shape and it's black. This needs to be on some sort of a Gibson USA guitar. Like put that on a 50 standard. Oh yeah, that'd be beautiful. Or if that's a bit too crazy for a traditional model, throw it on the modern. It would sell. It would sell. But this is a top only refinish and I believe is what, $15.99? A little bit more than I would personally pay for that. Next up, we had a gaggle of prototypes. So here is a 339, which is like a Les Paul size 335, a regular 335, and then a 235 in a string through format. Now we've actually seen a few of these show up before and they kind of sat around for a while, but they eventually ended up selling. So perhaps they were just thinking, should we string through all the ES models? So I'd really be interested to hear your guys' thoughts on this. For me, I'm not willing to pay the prototype prices to get to try one of these, but if they offered this alongside the regular stop bar tailpiece, I think I would choose the string through just because it's something different. That's something that they don't have to compete against the used market for because there's really not much of an option out there because string through will feel a little bit different than stop tail. Maybe it'll give it better sustain. Maybe it'll feel different. I'm not really sure. I haven't got to try one of these. But the prices are pretty high. So the 235 is 4,600 bucks. You gotta remember, I think this model, brand new, was like 1,800 bucks. Some of the rare finishes today can sell for 25 to three. That one seems the most highly priced. Like the 335 is slightly cheaper than that, but you also have to remember there's like a uh, crack in it right here. And then the 339, it's not as popular of a model, but even a little bit less at 4,200. Like these ones, I get it. Okay, prototype, interesting thing. All right, this one, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Maybe they're trying to bank off of the cult classic ES-235 fandom. I guess it's also a special finish. It's just really, really, really hard to see. They call it espresso, which I assume is just like a really, really dark brownish black. So maybe that one's cooler in person. Next up in prototype land, there's a 1961 330 TD. I mean, this thing's beautiful, but I don't really see anything that makes it special necessarily to make it a prototype. Maybe I'm just missing something here. It's not necessarily a model I really pay attention to, but that fretboard's gorgeous. You've got the red streaking within the brown and the whole aged natural finish over top of that really complements it. But 330s are cool guitars. Next up here was this SG standard in an olive drab green finish. This modification, you know, it's kind of got some art deco vibes to it, but all I see on this guitar, no matter where I look, my eyes are instantly drawn into here like a black hole. There's a black arrow on this guitar and it's telling me to look here, but there's nothing there. <laughs> <laughs> but I like the zebra bobbins of the pickups. I really appreciate the uh, the black tenon cover right here because it almost disappears and that really draws you into this arrow. I don't think they were intentionally hoping that to look like an arrow though. I've never seen a pick guard done up like that. So you've got the black area of it, then you get the white and then another layer of black. I'm curious how they did that. If that's just printed on or if this is a multi-layered pick guard and they just like kind of sculpted some of it out. It doesn't look like that's the case. Otherwise, you'd see like a black layer here and then another cream layer. But that'd be something they could toy around with. Oh, and in case you missed it from this giant arrow grabbing your attention. Yeah, you got black and gold knobs on here and they kind of swapped that out to a blacked out hardware style too. I thought it was a cool piece. Next up, I did not even see this one. Like I saw it, but I didn't realize that they had redone it in a sparkle purple finish. I have not reviewed the Thunderbird model yet, this new base model from Gibson. So it would have been cool to have a custom colored one. This is just a really, really extra dark sparkle purple. 
Maybe it just doesn't come to life in these photos enough. Sometimes white backgrounds will do that. So whoever got this one, if you get some photos of it outside, definitely send them to me. I might feature them in future episodes. But you can see right here, yeah, that started life as one of the uh, Pelham Blue versions. <laughs> I'm not sure how that happens. Like, it must just get scuffed through, like, in the buffing process or something. Or maybe they did it on purpose just for fun. And the last one, just for fun, was one of those confusingly named Junior Specials done up in a, a lime green finish. But what I like is they did it to the back. That's a common theme that I'll talk about in all these episodes. The top three fins only, they're just not that special to me. To me, that portrays, this is just something we need to do real quick. When they do the whole guitar, that's when it's truly a master's craft. They have a vision for this guitar. It's fine art. At least that's the way I view it. So this one, to have made it better in my opinion, they should have gave it a green headstock. Because <laughs> then that thing would be screaming. But that's sold at $14.99. So hey, those are all the coolest models that were offered this week, but here are some contenders that had some cool wood grain or some other interesting modifications. First off, this Les Paul Jr. bass. Phenomenal wood grain in the body. Like, this is not all that rare to find in this series back when it was in production, like on the guitar ones. Like, you can even check out my different reviews on the guitar and bass version of this one. One of mine had something like this. But what was extra cool is look at the back on that. <laughs> Like, it's got the same thing that's going on on the top, right? It's just a little bit more exaggerated, but what really sold it for me is the maple neck on this one appears to have, you know, some sort of a figuring. Like, it's kind of hard to see exactly what it is. Maybe it's just an uneven stain, but it kind of looks like a, a candy cane neck. You kind of understand the vibes I'm talking about there. That'd probably be pretty cool in person. Now we had the 70s Explorer absolute steal of a deal at 500 bucks off and you get a tp6 tailpiece kind of an interesting black pearloid pick guard all golded out hardware i really don't understand why they didn't have this listed for at least 18.99 congrats whoever got that deal this one yeah it's a 60s tribute these are really fun guitars but they're not supposed to have this nice of a top like Generally, they're pretty plain. They might have some wood grain, but a top like this, it's kind of unheard of. Not to say that there's not other ones out there. Generally, on this grade of guitars, usually they just have a slab of maple that they use for these things. They're not really picking and choosing too much out of these. But every once in a while, you can find an outlier example that just has a pretty good top for this grade of guitar. I think when these things were brand new, I think they were, what, $8.99? Something like that? They might have been $1,300. Let's see, what year was this one? Oh, 2016. Yeah, that'd probably have been 1300 or so. Next up, this classic. I just thought it was cool. The straight up and down wood grain. You don't see that on a Les Paul too often. Like, you normally find the wood grain rings. This really reminds me of, like, an 80s Les Paul. They had the vertical running wood grain line, but then it got cross-hatched with the flame figuring. Now this one, it doesn't have the flame figuring, but it has the straight up and down look. I threw this one back here just to treat all my viewers that actually watched at almost the end of the video. So this is another 335 prototype that they've got out here, but it has to be one of the coolest finishes I've ever seen. So let's go ahead and look through this. It's called TV White, but the reason they couldn't sell this one is A, it looks like we've got some light cracking in the top. That's rather unfortunate. And this, that just happens to pretty much all of them in that era. But they said that there was lacquer sink on the front. And this is the photo that they're talking about that. I love that look. It's fantastic. It gives a texture to the guitar. Really sells this TV white finish with like that reddish grain fill. I mean, you can see just how red that fill is just right here. Maybe it's supposed to be brown, but it looks red to me. This would look kind of like a vintage guitar at the beginning without all the other relicking and aging that are sometimes associated with these. I really hope these make a comeback. Because the other thing that's interesting is, to me anyways... That looks, oh, oh, I think I'm onto something here. I didn't realize this. So 335s, they're maple poplar maple sandwiches, right? So normally you have maple on the top. Like, look at this guy, he's got a flame top. Or look at this guy, he's got a solid finish. This one, if I'm not mistaken, that's mahogany wood grain. And that's what you would traditionally find with these TV style finishes. So does that mean it's mahogany, poplar mahogany? Or is it just straight up mahogany? Like, it just says mahogany. However, that's just not how 335s are generally done. 
Like, I wish they would have stringed through this one, because then I have a lot to talk about in the episode. Really cool finish, really cool body woods, and strange setup. That would have been the perfect storm to make me buy this. I've almost talked myself into it at this point. Like, $4,299, a $1,300 premium for a prototype. I think I'm going to let it go, but that is a cool piece. We've got three more to talk about. Thanks for sticking with me. So here we've got a Les Paul Traditional. It just looked particularly nice to me. I like that faded blue color. Like it's almost washed out like a, a worn in blue jean. That's a little bit too light of a color, at least for the jeans I like. <laughs> but it just, it, it made me happy to look at. It's 2015 specs if you like those. But really finding a top like that, it's not that rare. I mean, here's one here, 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 here. They're all pretty nice but this was definitely the best price wand currently on the market. This SG special, I don't know, something about it, just evil. Like it originally would have looked like this. It still had the sparkling burgundy finish and the black plastics. But this one, when they added the gold pole pieces, the black and gold mixed bridge, which is an ABR1 style, mind you, instead of the original wrap tail, and then they threw one of the Melody Maker style vibrolas on it and uh, whatever these types of knobs are. It looks like they might have done something a little bit unique right there. It's hard for me to see, but maybe you guys can see it when I zoom in during editing. And then they went as far as uh, mix matching the tuners with the black tip and the gold surrounds. It just looks pretty cool. That's all I'm saying. And our last pretty cool guitar is this Gibson Les Paul Special in the two humbucker format. All right, so you look at this one. They put gold hardware on it. Big deal. You also have to see, they added a pick guard on here with three screws, okay. <laughs> but you gotta remember, these things are all about wood grain. This is, you know, it, it's nice, it's standard, nothing too crazy. Like, it'll catch your attention, but it's, it's the back on this one. I like how it's curved. Normally this is pretty straight when they have wood grain figuring like this, so the way that it's curved would make it dance even more. And you can just barely tell the neck is going to have very similar figuring to it. That's some pretty nice wood grain, I would say. And for a thousand bucks, no reason why that wouldn't have sold. All right, troglodytes, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.